Today we're going to go over Podman. It's an alternative for Docker. And we're going to go over how to use Podman on a Mac with a Spring Boot REST application. All right, let's dive in. First thing we need to do here is install it. And there's some real good documentation for Podman. If you go to podman.io, it'll tell you all about the product. There is a good documentation at docs.podman.io and it goes over all the different features and commands. We're going to be using this from the CLI, so from the command line. So let's start. I'm going to open up a shell here and I'll be doing most of the work on the shell here initially. First thing we need to do is install Podman. I already have it installed, but on my Mac, we can actually do a brew install Podman. Okay, so I've already installed Podman and I have version 5.2.2 installed. I can actually type podman dash dash version to see the version installed here. So for the first time, I need to run podman machine init. This will go through initialization process. Now when I do this, I can actually put options in here to add additional CPUs, add memory, and set a network mode. One of the keys that we can put in here for the network mode, which I find is critical when I'm working on a VPN, is to set the user mode networking. And you will need that if you're running on a VPN. The other thing you can do is a mounting the volume, the dash V. So one of the things that I will want to do is have my container write to a log file and that log file to appear locally on my machine. So I will add the dash V option in here. All right, now that we have it installed, I can start it by running the Podman machine start. Now, if I restart my machine, so I'm going to create my Podman folder. Now that exists, I will start the machine. Okay, and the machine has started up and is started up in rootless mode. If I wanted to configured as a rootful mode, I could use a command set rootful, or I could have put that in the command when I initialize the machine. Okay, so now we're up and running here. I can do podman machine list and see that we have our machine up and running. It's podman default. We have six CPUs attached to it, two gig of RAM, and 100 gig of disk space. And I could pass in parameters to change the number of CPUs or memory when I initialize it. Okay, so now that we have this, I can see if we have any images. So I can do Podman images. Right now, we have none. So let's go through and let's create a Spring Boot application. I'm using IntelliJ. So I'm going to use the Spring Initializer. So I'm going to call this Podman Demo. I'm going to create a Java, Maven, Thomas J Consulting. I'm going to use Credo 17, so Java 17. I'm going to create a jar. Okay, so the only thing I need for this is going to be web. So Spring Web. Great, let's create that. We'll open this up in a new project. And I'm going to put some very minimal components in here. So in the source, main, Java, I'm going to add in here a controller. We'll create a 
controller package to start with. Let me rename that. And within that, I will create a simple REST controller. Okay, we'll annotate this as a REST controller. And in here, we'll simply have a get request. So a get mapping, test me, and we'll have a public string test me, and it will return. This is a test message. Okay, let's run this and make sure it runs. We'll use Postman to verify it. All right, and we got our test message back. Great. And this is currently running on port 8080. So what I want to do here now is I have Maven installed. So I want to create a jar file. So I'm going to go to my life cycles. I'm going to package this. And then I will see in my targets over here, it will actually generate a jar file for me. And that's a fat jar. This is what we will use to deploy into our Podman. Okay, great. So over here, we need another file and we're gonna need a Docker file. So I'll create a new file and I call that Docker. And in our Docker file, we're gonna keep that fairly simple. But what we're going to do is copy the snapshot we just created, podman demo, 001 snapshot.jar. I'm going to call it just app jar. So we're going to start with the base image of Amazon Credo 17, which is what I'm running in my environment here. We're going to copy the jar file over there and then we're going to run java-jar app jar and we're going to put that in the root directory okay so now that we have our docker file i'm going to open a terminal over here and we can run some podman commands i'm going to stop i'm going to do a podman images to see if there's any images here. Right now there are not. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through and actually build this. So let's see how we can actually do that here. Podman build. We'll give it a tag name. I'm going to call this Tom's test base dot. Now I need to be in the directory where the Docker file is. And the Docker file is going to copy it from the target directory. Okay, so let's try this. The file name needs to actually be Docker file. So let's just refactor that. We'll rename it and we'll add file at the end of it. Okay, there we go. So we'll run this again. It's pulling the Amazon Credo image. And now it's creating our image that we need. Okay, so if we go back to our terminal now and we do a podman images, we'll see that we have one for the Amazon Credo and we have Tom's test. And remember that I actually use the dash T to call this Tom's test. Great. So now I can actually take this and we can run it. And let's see what we have to do to actually go through and run this. So one thing that we should do in our Docker file is we should expose port 8080. So now pod, so we're going to go through here and expose port 8080. This way Podman understands that this should be exported. So we're going to go through and build this again. Okay. 
And now that we have that port exposed, we're going to actually run it with that exposed port. So we can do that simply by running podman user run command. I'm going to run it detached. I'm going to say port 8100. That's my local port. It's going to connect to port 8080 in the container. And the container I'm using is going to be Tom's test. Okay. Now if I do podman space ps, I should see that started. And notice if I extend this here, it's giving it kind of what they call a silly name. Okay. So let's see if we can actually start our postman up again. And let's connect to port 8080. And we get an error. So let's try port 8100. Ah, there we go. So we've connected port 8080 internally to port 8100. And we can see this here as well. So now that it's running, we have more things we can do. I can actually do a podman stop and I can use the container ID to stop it. Optionally, I could use the name. Now, if I do a podman PS, I do not see it running. But if I do a podman PS dash A, that will show me all of them, even the ones that have been stopped. Now that I see that it stopped, I can actually go back up here and I could actually start that image again. Now, if I go back to the Podman PS, I can see that it's currently running. Okay, so let's go through and let's stop him. And now that we have that, I can do a Podman images and it shows us the images that we have here. Notice I have one image here called none. And as I create them with the same name over and over, I'll see a whole bunch of those on there. That's kind of annoying. And it's kind of nice to get rid of those. And we can do that with the podman prune command. That's podman image prune. And that will get rid of all the old images. that haven't been cleaned up yet. Okay, so that's kind of nice. So again, podman image prune to clean up the old names. Okay, so podman ps, we can see we don't have anything running. I'm gonna do a ps a and I can see stuff here. So I want to get rid of that container. I can actually do a podman rm and the container ID. Okay, and if I do a PSSA, we'll say the container is gone. So I can clean up containers with our move. Now, if I do a podman images, I can see various images there. And if I want to get rid of images, I can do podman, I can do a podman rmi and an image name. So I'll do this image ID. And this has deleted that. So now if I do a podman images, so podman rm to remove a container, podman rmi to remove an image. We do podman images. Now I can actually go through and we can run this and I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this a Bob one. So let's start this and I'm listening on port 8100. There we go. I'm going to start my first instance on port 8100. I'm going to start another instance on port 8200. I'll call this Bob2. I'll create another instance on port 8300. 
I'll call this Bob3. My three instances is running. And let's go to our Postman. And that's on 8100. 8200 and 8300. So I've deployed multiple copies of my file. Okay, so this is kind of what I wanted to go over. There's a couple other things that are interesting that I might do another video on later, and that's mapping some files from the host to the container. So you can write out common logs or attach files and such. Other things you can do is you can use different configuration files, et cetera, et cetera. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned a little bit about Podman. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.